Good afternoon, everybody. This is Hunter Mazingo bringing you your daily market insight video for Monday, October 11th, uh, a little over 10 minutes after market close here in Jacksonville, Florida, 4.14 p.m. Eastern time to be exact. And in today's videos, we're going to look at stocks bucking the broader market trend, which has been weakness, particularly in the S&P and the Qs. And we're going to look at whether or not it's cause for some serious concern that the Qs and the S&P can't seem to get above uh, some key moving averages. We're going to look at those charts. We're also going to look at the stocks that are acting worse than the market. So you got the stocks acting the best, the stocks acting the worst, and we're going to take a close look uh, at what the indices are doing, particularly the Qs and the S&P. Before we do that, let's talk about what just happened. Indices all red, QQQ and SPY can't get above crucial moving averages, like I said. Uh, G5, which actually was showing a lot of relative strength early on throughout the day, um, ended up being down 0 0.53. That was green uh, and up anywhere from half a percent to 1% uh, around 3, uh, excuse me, around 11 o'clock. And then by the end of the day, all, all of those end up finishing red. The S&P down roughly 0 0.7. The Q's down a little over three quarters of a percent. The Dow Jones industrial average down a little less than three quarters of a percent. Mid caps and small caps both down about half a percent. Market state remains in a correction. There is no reason to change that based on the market action that we have seen. And there's also no changes to the trend gauge. So market leaders remains the same. We still see some really constructive action from leaders, whether that's in the oil and gas space, banks, even some gross stocks still acting very well. Um, short term, you notice we do have this little green arrow and that's primarily because of mid and small caps. Those are sitting more or less right on the 21. So if those have a harsh break of their 21 day exponential moving average, that might be changing in the near future here. Uh, no change to the medium term uh, and no change to long term either from Don's last video. So before we get into the charts here and we look at some of these, these leading stocks, we look at the indices, we look at some of the lagging stocks as well. Uh, allow me to reference the team at Revere here. Uh, this is me in the middle. I know I always talk about this, but if you have any questions, if you wanna know, know more about something I said, if you don't understand something I said, whatever the case may be, send me an email. I'm happy to respond and answer your questions. Uh, if you're interested in what we do at Revere uh, and what our strategy is uh, and so on, you can email myself, you can email Dan, Tim, Merrill, Alex, or Don at revereasset.com as well. So let's get into the charts and we're gonna start with SPY here. And so you can see the S&P just does not want to get back above that 21 EMA. Uh, we more or less closed right on it here on the 7th, closed slightly below it to right on it on the 8th. And then today we got a really, really poor close. We were actually not far below this. We were around 436, 437 up until the last 20 or 30 minutes. But this is not great action here. This is a really poor close back below the 21, back below the eight. You can almost say the S&P was rejected at the 50 here. It got very close. Uh, so now the important level to watch on this is to the upside, that is, you wanna see if we can recapture this eight day exponential. That's roughly 436. So a close over 436 would be a positive. And then beyond that, we wanna start seeing some closes above the 21 EMA. We haven't really got that. You see these last three closes, they're not necessarily in the top of the range. Uh, they're not the most attractive candles, right? So we want to see some consecutive closes above this 8, above this 21, uh, and eventually get back above the 50. Beyond that, we need to keep a close eye on the lows of these days here, right? This 427, 428 area. Uh, and I know we're a little bit away from that, really only about a percent and a half from it. But watch this area. If you undercut these lows, that could be cause for concern or at least something to pay attention to. Um, no matter what. So let's go to the Qs here. And you'll see that the Qs have essentially been rejected at the 21 and have made a lower high the last three days. So once again, this is not the most constructive behavior. Uh, although we see some stocks acting well, we want to, to see the Qs hold this 360 area, which also corresponds to the eight. And you wanna see some closes above the 21. We've yet to do that, rejected here, wasn't able, even able to get all the way back up to it here. And then today, just continuing lower. Once again, a very poor close, kind of dramatizing these candles a little bit. It looked a lot, we were sitting at around 360 up until the last 30 minutes or so. And I'll show you a five minute here. So you make sure you believe me. Uh, here we go. Up until roughly 320, 325. 
high. We were right here around 360 holding on. Towards the end of the day, we end up having a very bad close. So not the greatest action. Like I said, once again, you want to see some closes above 360 for the Qs. So you want to see the Qs get through these highs, get back above 365. But for the time being, this isn't the greatest look. And once again, this 350 level, the lows from uh, last week become very important. Go to IWM, which looks much better. As you, we said, just slightly below the 21, exacerbated by a poor close, but more or less right on it. This 220 level has been a, uh, a period or an area where we've just kind of moved all around it for the better part of the last three months on IWM, up and down, up and down, as you can see. So uh, a pretty uh, important area here as all these moving averages have quite literally converged on IWM. And then we got a very similar look on MDY. As you can see here, if it will load for us, there we go. Just slightly, slightly, slightly below the 21. You, you don't have all the moving averages converging as tight, uh, but still this is looking and acting better than the, uh, the S&P and the Qs. And a lot of that is due to banks, oils and gas, that type of thing. And then lastly, the Dow, Kind of similar. So you see a lot of rejections at the 50, right? Although like the Dow looks a little better than the S&P, the mid and small caps do, they're also somewhat getting rejected, even though they have some strong parts uh, of them. For example, you know, there's a decent bit of banks and oil and gas companies in IWM. They usually benefit from strength in that area and they have been, but still struggling to get above those moving averages and have some sustained momentum. So now that we're done with that, Let's go look at some of the stocks that are bucking the trend, that are showing positive momentum. And we did make a new buy today. We bought ITA. This is an aerospace and defense ETF. You can see it did reverse today after some really nice strength in the morning. But what I want to show you is the constituents of the ETF itself. Look at this strength here in NOC, right? And these are all constituents of the ETF. These next three or four I'm going to show you here. Look at that RS line, a monster, monster move. Big volume on a lot of these days uh, for NOC. L LHX, this is LH, uh, L3 Harris here. Same story as NOC, not quite as sharp, but look at the RS line here. Moving upwards, a very strong move. You've also got, um, excuse me here, BA made a move to get above 230 today, which is the 200 reversed, very similar to what ITA did. And lastly, you've got RTX, if it will load for us here as well. RTX, one of the strongest in the in the space, was one of the first to really get back above the moving averages and have some sustained momentum to the upside. So some, some positive action in the aerospace and defense world. We also have seen these names, these chemical agriculture names I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks act very well. NTR having a good day today, showing relative strength versus the market, evidenced by the RS line. CF in the same space, monster move in the RS line, monster move in price. MOS also in the same space. You also had oil and gas uh, continue their move. You can see when you look at some of these charts, we're respecting the eight day for the most part. Uh, LNG is one I've been talking about. FANG is another. Uh, these are obviously extended, but you can see this is a very strong move. A lot of these leaders in this space respecting the eight day on this move. Uh, really going all the way back to right here when it really started at the towards the end of September. Two names that are a little bit more volatile, but have acted pretty well. LC, this is Lending Club. You can see it's above all its moving averages, above the 50, 21, and 8, unlike the S&P and the Qs. Upstart, a poor finish to the day, but same kind of story here. Above the 21, consolidating nicely above 300. Uh, also holding on above the 8, even with the poor close today. App, one of the most interesting and maybe the one that has shown the most relative strength. Uh, look at what this has done, even on a day like today where the market was down, making higher highs, <clears throat> APP, App Levin, uh, doing very well, showing some big time relative strength. Two of the top names in the semiconductor space, bucking the broader market trend. MRVL, I know it's down today, but you can see had a big breakout with big volume. Uh, I'd keep an eye on this one right here as it's just a tiny bit below the 6407 pivot. And then the other name in this space, AMBA, also still above the 21. So I know I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. We want to pay attention to the stocks that are above the 21 and are above the eight, while others in the uh, while 
the market is not. And when I say the market, I mean the S&P, the Qs, et cetera. So a few more leaders here. Tesla, certainly a leader today, was really carrying the ARKK fund uh, for the better part of the day. However, it ended up finishing red. Tesla, on the other hand, finishing green up a little less than 1%. Net, uh, just a move that honestly kind of leaves you speechless. Incredible relative strength, but I'm more or less a 25% move in a matter of five days. Uh, maybe even a little bit more than that, but phenomenal, phenomenal RS. I mean, from from here to straight up to here, incredible, incredible move from net, one of the true market leaders at the moment. SI, although this one is very volatile, uh, has been doing very well while cryptocurrency has also been doing well. And in that same conversation, we've also seen GBTC, aka the Bitcoin trust, start to act a little bit better or a lot better than Ethereum, for example. So GBTC up 5% today, ETHE, I believe, down 5%. Yeah, so, uh, so a big disparity you don't see quite often today in GBTC uh, or in, in ETHE or Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then lastly, if I can get this one to load as well, a name that is in the portfolio here, BTU, a coal name showing some relative strength today up 4% while the market was down. So those are some of the best looking names that I can find out there. Some of the ones showing the best relative strength. They've got the moving averages in order. They've got the volume. So keep an eye on those names. And a lot of those levels, right, those levels I talked about on the, uh, on the indices, if those things start to work, for example, you start to see closes above 360 on the Qs, closes above the 21 on the Q or the S&P, you want to keep a very, very, very tight watch on the leading stocks that have acted better while the broader markets did not. Some of the laggards for the day, Affirm, uh, was actually up nicely at one point, I think up two, three percent, ended up finishing down four percent. This one is very, very volatile. However, it is acting like a market leader. Um, it's just the nature of this stock is to be very, very wild with the swings, so keep that in mind. Um, obviously, it's still very strong, got the moving averages how you want them, uh, but like I said, a very volatile name, lagging today, uh, pretty poor close on a firm. Dash had been a leader, has now broken the 50. Uh, this is not a good look here. It was holding up at 200. Now it's come through and under, undercut this 50-day moving average. So Dash, a laggard that was acting like a leader, as you can see in, in this vicinity here. A couple more square had made a nice comeback uh, with the broader market as you, and just failed right into the 21 EMA and has had two really bad days in a row, as you can see. PWR, not really benefiting with, you know, it's just, it's not acting well after the gap. Now, granted, it is still above the low of the gap day. Maybe the 50-day is, is going to catch up to that. But for the time being, PWR, which was acting really well after the gap, no longer doing so. CMG, another name that was weak today. Uh, below all the moving averages, you see the 21 cross through the 50. Um, this 1800 level was important. Not great to see it undercut these lows here on CMG. Lulu, a similar story. Uh, you see the 21 crossing through the 50, also undercutting these lows here uh, from, sorry if I can get over it. So similar story with CMG and Lulu. You got the 21 crossing through the 50, undercutting recent lows from four or five days ago as well. And the last laggard, and it really isn't that bad of a laggard, Snapchat lagging today down about 2% and undercutting some of these moving averages. Still very close to them, nonetheless a laggard today. So hopefully that's valuable to you guys who listened. Um, like I said, if you have any questions about any of the, the strong stocks I covered, any of the weak stocks, the levels I mentioned on the, on the indices, please send me an email. I'd be happy to respond. But other than that, I will see you guys on Thursday's video as well as the podcast. So have a great week and I'll talk to you later.